Hey guys, we're excited to unveil to you today the Flock Audio Patch App version 2.0. We took what was already great in the earlier versions of the software and made it even better by adding additional features, functions, workflow enhancements, and customization options. So we're gonna dive into it, we're gonna take a look, and I'm even gonna show you some tips and tricks you may have not known about with your patch system. So let's take a look. All right, when you first launch the patch app version 2.0, you're gonna notice the app itself actually looks very familiar to the earlier versions with a few additional features that we'll discuss later on. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna show you guys how to increase the overall patch app scale size so it's easier to view on various screens. This is really easy to do. Simply go to settings, user preferences, and here in user preferences, you'll note that there are a whole bunch of different user customization options. But we're gonna look at the application scale size. I'm gonna start by choosing one of the three additional ones, which will be small, and I'll show you the process on how to increase it, and then we'll go one more scale size up. First I click small, and I'll get a prompt notification. In order to resize the patch app application, a relaunch of the software is required for the new scale size to take full effect. What this means is it's actually gonna close the patch app and relaunch it at the user chosen size. So let's click proceed. Now you can see the patch app has opened in a much larger scale size, but I wanna take it one step further because I like the way it looks in medium on my Slate Digital Raven. So I'm gonna click medium, get the same notification, click proceed, and now you can see the patch app itself looks beautiful. It's much larger, it's easier to see, and it's easier to work with as well. Now you'll note, since we've made this change, when I close the patch app, and when I relaunch it again, it's always gonna relaunch to whatever I last left it at, which is nice, so you don't have to go into that menu constantly. It automatically saves that. Now that we have a much better viewing scale size for the patch app, let's take a look at what other user preferences are available to us. At the top here, we have the hardware fan control. By default, it's always in cycling fan. However, I can choose any of these available options depending on my studio environment. I like to choose emergency fan only. This tells the hardware to only engage the fan if it's starting to detect that it's overheating and needs to cool down. Below that is the language preferences option. Currently, we have English and French. We will be adding more language support options in future updates. Next, we have the digital rack space fonts. This is a user customizable option where you can change the fonts in the hardware index as well as the active routing grid. I'm gonna go ahead and choose Arial. I'm prompted with a notification similar to the application scale size. It says it needs to relaunch the app in order for these changes to take full effect. Let's click proceed. When the app relaunches, you'll note that all of the fonts in the hardware index as well as some of the other options and controls here have changed to Arial. This is a nice option for users to have in case they want to change the font for easier viewing or just personal preference. I'm going to go ahead and change it back to the original default DIN because that's what I prefer to work with. Another customizable option is the ability to resize the app either vertically or horizontally. All you have to do is hover over the edge of the app on any side, click and drag it out. For instance, in this example, I'm going to expose more available paths on my screen. The great part about this is now that I've made the app to my own custom tailor size, when I close it and relaunch it at a different date, it's going to open the app in whatever the last known save state was. This makes it really easy to be able to set up your patch app and not have to resize it or deal with any scaling issues later down the road once you've found that perfect setup for the app. I can easily reset this back to its original default by simply going to Settings, User Preferences, choosing a different application scale size. For instance, I'll go to Small for this one. Then I'll go back to settings, user preferences, and choose back to medium, which is my preferred state. As you'll see here, it's now back to its default setup.
A highly requested feature was the ability to launch the patch app without any available internet connection. As you'll note on this system, it's not connected to any internet source, whether it be Wi-Fi or network. When I close the patch app and relaunch it again, it'll automatically relaunch the patch app without any need or check for the internet. This makes it really great for anybody using the patch system in a non-internet environment. We've also removed the need for the software registration key. This means you can download as many instances of the patch app as you need on as many available computers as you have and use the app whether it be online or offline without any restrictions. We've added a new feature called the stored default launch routing. This means every time you launch the patch app, you can have the system recall a desired routing automatically. It's really easy to do. First, I'm gonna go ahead and set up a really simple routing for this example. Now, I'm gonna navigate up to the stored routings menu, click new, and I'm just gonna call this launch. Now I'll click the drop down menu where all my stored routings will be, hover over the routing I wanna create as the default launch routing, and right click on it. When you see this check mark here, you'll also see a notification that says default routing. Now I'm gonna close the patch app, and I'm gonna reopen it again, and automatically it will launch this routing. This makes it even more efficient for users who need an automatic routing recalled each time they launch the patch app. If you need to get rid of this as the default launch routing, just simply right click on that routing again and when you close the app and reopen it again, it'll be a clean open grid. I wanted to take a quick moment to step away from our demo to show you how versatile and powerful the stored routing section is of the Flock Audio patch app. By clicking on the drop down menu, you'll note an open routings folder button near the bottom of the drop down. Clicking on it will launch a finder window. Here is where all of your stored routings will be shown. You can click on any one of your stored routings and drag and drop it into a client session folder, for instance, if the client wasn't returning for a few months or even a year, so it's not taking up valuable real estate in your drop down menu. Of course, you can right click on it and move it to trash as well to remove it from the list entirely. But we also have some quick commands right next to the drop down menu, which makes it easier to manage some of these routings. For instance, I'm going to recall a routing here. Then I'm going to modify it. Now that I've modified it, I want to save over top of the existing routing. All I have to do is click save and proceed. Now it's saved this modification under this routing name. Of course, I can change that name by clicking edit. And now it's shown as launch one. Now I can go ahead and I can even make an additional change to it. For instance, I'm just gonna move some stuff around here and by clicking new, I can call this launch two. And now I have two different routings saved with just a different modification. So I have multiple options available here. Of course, I can delete this now if I'm not gonna use it any further by just simply selecting it, recalling it and clicking delete. Now I only have my original routing here, launch one. You've probably noticed by now a new selection below each individual path containing two different arrows. This is what we call the movable path selection. I can now move entire paths by just simply clicking on the corresponding arrows below that path anywhere on the grid. Where this becomes really useful is for instance when I have multiple paths next to each other and I want to create room. For this example, I want to malt off of path 1, but path 2 is already full. Normally I'd have to drag and drop each individual digital rack space out of the way to create that room, but I don't have to anymore. I can simply just click on the corresponding arrow and create that room. Now I can create that desired malt that I want really quickly and efficiently. I want to take a quick moment to show you guys some simple key commands built into the patch app which will make your experience far more efficient. Here we have a signal chain. If I want to bypass anything in the signal chain, I can simply right click on it and bypass it. Of course, we can do this much quicker using key commands. So by holding command and clicking on any one of these digital rack spaces, I can do a true bypass on them in real time and A and B whether I like them in my signal chain or not and allows you to do a lot of A and Bing really quickly. I now also have multiple options for removing digital rack spaces from my signal chain within a path. 
I can either right click on it and click remove or I can hold option and click on any digital rack space to remove it. I can also click on it and drag it back to the hardware index to remove it as well. So this gives me multiple options, whatever I prefer, to remove digital rack spaces from an existing signal chain. The Patch app also allows you to rearrange existing signal chains by just simply clicking and dragging. For example, I have a compressor after this EQ, but I want to hear this compressor before the EQ. All I have to do as I'm listening to audio is click on the compressor and drag and drop it over top of the EQ. Now the compressor is coming before the EQ. I can A and B this as many times as I want to find whatever the desired signal chain should be. One of the most exciting and highly anticipated features being added to Patch App version 2.0 is the stereo pairing capability. Stereo pairing means you can take individual digital rack spaces and combine them together whether it be in two or multiples and treat them the same if you're bypassing them, if you're rearranging them or moving them around the active grid. For instance, if we look at the hardware index located to the left hand side of the patch app, we have some digital rack spaces that are taller than others. These indicate a stereo pair. So if we're looking at 8 and 9 here, which is a mastering compressor, I've labeled them left and right channels. When I click and drag them, you'll note that it shows now the left and right channels. So if I drag and drop them into the active routing grid, I can now bypass them simultaneously together. I can also remove them as well in the same manner. This is really great for anybody who's using a mixing or mastering bus. So I'm going to set up something like that. I'm going to go out of my converters, into compressors, into an EQ, saturation for some color, and then back into my converters. So right here we have a mix or mastering bus set up really, really easy. Now I can manipulate this in any way, shape, or form. Now let's take it a step further. I want to create a malt in between my stereo pair channels for parallel processing. If I try and drag and drop them to create that space for the malt, you can see it's not possible because they're linked together and acting as they should as a stereo pair. In order to create that space, I can very easily just select the arrows at the bottom of this path to create that space. Now I'll select the M next to each one of the saturation points, whereas I want to add my EQ. I'll choose my EQ, but you can see it's a stereo pair as well and I can't just simply drag and drop it into place. So what I'll do is I'll remove it and I'll hold shift on my keyboard and it'll split them in the hardware index. I'm going to remove this now. And you can see that now they're a stereo pair again. By holding down shift, it allows me to treat them as individual digital rack spaces. I'll drag and drop them into place and now choose my interface as well. And I'll have four stems of audio going into my DAW. Now let's take a look at how I set up stereo pairs using the patch app. I'm going to navigate to the left side of the app here where the hardware setup menu is below the hardware index. When I open this menu, you'll see this is where you modify and organize all of your analog gear connected to your patch system. You'll now note that there are pair icons in between each individual rack space. This means I can now pair any two channels I want or multiple channels if I wanted to by just simply clicking the pair icon in between them. For instance, if we take a look at this mastering compressor here on the left hand side, say I don't want them to be a stereo pair. I'm gonna click the pair icon off and keep an eye right here when I close this. Now they're treated as individual rack spaces, similar to the earlier versions of the software. But of course I want these to be a stereo pair, so I'm gonna repair them again. And there you have it, Patch App version 2.0 in all its glory. We hope you guys enjoyed this demo of all the new features and look forward to the incredible creations you'll do with this new version of the Patch software. As always, let's get back to mixing and happy patching from all of us at Flock Audio.